Welcome to the Sound of Movement podcast. Today we have a very exciting show. Why? Because we're talking about our most favorite topic, flexibility. How do you get flexible? What do you need to do to maintain it? How do you get flexible if you're older and you've never been flexible? We're going to be going through five of the key breakthroughs that we've had. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image. Like Vasquez said in Aliens, let's rock, tribe. If you're new here, we got Rich behind the mix. We got Rad across the table from me. And my name is Yanni Bormeister, and we are Unity Gym, experts at turning driven people into athletes. As always, this episode is brought to you by the Unify Movement System, or UMS, the only online program effectively balancing strength, flexibility, and fitness so you can unleash your inner athlete. Get daily coaching by us, plus both the epic at-home workouts pathway or the UMS gym workouts pathway so you never miss a workout and become completely unstoppable. Now, also today, we have a big announcement. We are going uh, uh, to have a wicked flash sale for our 18-minute stretching routine. It starts right now. We're going to be uh, linking in the description of this and we'll send out emails and Facebook posts and all sorts of stuff. Get ready, tribe. Of course, a big warm welcome to everybody in the UMS Movement Mastermind Facebook group. And also, if you're catching us live on YouTube, if you like what you hear, see, and find, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell. We'd also like to send some love to everyone listening to the replay on the podcast. How are you, Rad? I'm great. I am very good. Uh, it's been, a, we were just talking before the show about how challenging a week it, it's actually been. And then I said, oh, mate, it's been a challenging fortnight. And then you laughed and said, oh, it's been a challenging 18 months. And it has. It's a... It's tough, you know, in Sydney, we're in a lockdown that just keeps getting extended by four weeks and we've been in it for now. It's the gift that keeps on giving, yeah. isn't it? It's been, it's been seven <laughs> weeks now, hasn't it? I'm pretty yeah. sure. So, and um, I don't think it's going to be over in the four weeks that they've extended it for either. A lot of people don't, don't believe that. Victoria's just gone into their sixth lockdown. Those guys must be really feeling it. This is our second lockdown. They've just gone into their sixth. So, yeah, it's tough times, but we are really really doing our best to practice stoicism and just focus on what's in front of us and uh, this is what's in front of us you know we have the ability to really over deliver on um, you know what it is that we're doing here for you guys and gals around the world um, so yeah hopefully hopefully you're enjoying it but yeah I'm, I'm excited about this one because this is really this is really what started it all for us yeah we um, if you don't know, Yanni and I have been, I'm 43 now, Yanni's 41, and um, we've been personal trainers. We became personal trainers when we were in our, I was in my mid-20s and Yanni was in his early 20s. I think I was 26 and Yanni was 24, I think. So I guess we're both in our mid-20s. Um, so it was about at 17 years ago or 18 years ago or something like that. And um, we, uh, you know, we became personal trainers. We were young, we were dumb, we didn't know anything, but I just knew that for me, we both had no direction really in our lives and the only thing that we really enjoyed doing that nobody ever had to try and make us do was exercise and train. Um, you know, through all of our ups and downs in, in life, we always exercise. But we were, we were personal trainers, then we were gym owners and, and one day we decided, we said, let's do an online program and let's, you know, do something, you know, this internet is, is the next big thing. And we talked about, we had this discussion, we said, what do you think we should do? should we do like weight loss programs? Because at the time our business was probably um, transitioning out of being a weight loss business and into what it is now, which is a movement business about you know strength, flexibility and fitness. And I said to Yanni, um, I, I just had a gut feeling. I said, look man, when I search on YouTube and when I look at what people are doing and stuff, there's so much weight loss, but flexibility seems to be something that's trending. It seems to be something that I think people are starting to make a movement towards wanting to be flexible. And so we decided that that's what we were gonna do first. And we released the 18 minute stretching routine and the flexibility blueprint, because you know we had to learn how can we get people to be interested in what we do before we start asking them for money. Um, and that's, that's where it all started for us. And it took off really, really well. And we, we just got five star review after five star review because we, we, we made something really valuable. And it was funny because the first blueprint we did Remember, I made it myself and it was rubbish. It was just, a, it was like eight stretches that you could do at home. 
and I put a lot of effort into it and then you looked at it and, and you just said, man, this is, this is not valuable to somebody. We, you know, like you've put something together, great, but we need to do something that is actually going to be valuable. That if you downloaded it, you'd read it and go, wow, this is awesome. And so what we did, we spent a while really brain dumping or brainstorming what, what are the breakthroughs that we've had in flexibility because at the time we'd only been working on flexibility for a couple of years and we'd had some really big breakthroughs and we talked about what are our breakthroughs what have been the big moments in our training that was like a massive leap forward and that's what we turned into the flexibility blueprint of course if you don't have it yet you really should you can download it for free it's the 10 key lessons that were the breakthrough moments for us with flexibility and so, yeah, this show and this whole week uh, and next week as well are actually about the 10 key lessons of the Flexibility Blueprint. So this week we've released five videos on YouTube of the first five points. And that's what this whole uh, podcast is about today. We're going to be talking about those five yeah, points. Yeah, going in deep. And first of all, I really want to frame what a breakthrough moment is because a lot of people probably get, have heard that a million times before. But it's very, very specific for us. There's, it's not a wish, wash, throw away, loose uh, title. Uh, we consider a breakthrough moment something that uh, literally, as it sounds, you, you, training is all about stimulating the body, uh, experiencing an adaptation, uh, then usually a plateau, and then uh, a breakthrough moment that gets you to the next point. And, and the easiest way to have those consistently is to change up your programs every three, four, five or six weeks, depending on your program methodology. Uh, and we do that, but um, from time to time, even that doesn't work. Uh, you you don't know what you don't know, and uh, and and we're constantly we're we're, one of, we're very committed. One of our core values is to never settle and constantly strive to be better. And we um yeah we're constantly learning, and 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 part of that is reading books, studying literature, and uh, then the third is sort of uh, working with people that are that are better than us, that have trodden the path, that have more experience or skin in the game. And then the fourth is looking at the results we get uh, from like the, the feedback and the data points we collect from the tr training the thousands of people that we've had the pleasure of training. When you bring all that together, every so often you get a breakthrough moment where you go, ah, oh, that is what created that huge result. Or if we apply it that way, or if we do it that way, then we're going to get a much uh, a, a better result. And then you try that. You try it on yourself first, you're always the guinea pig, and then it works, and then we try it amongst the team, and it works again with everyone, and then we roll it out with our tribe here at Unity Gym, and it produces the same result. And only then do we go, okay, wow, that's a breakthrough moment. Let's document that, and let's use that in our programming, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, and so that's, that's what these breakthrough moments are, that, and they're really, really important. Um, uh, because essentially, you know, we have these blueprints that we give away as a, as a bit of a gift for saying thank you for supporting our channel, supporting our podcast. Uh, and uh, it is, there's no secrets here. It is literally the 10, and, and we keep it at 10. It's like the 10 commandments. We don't go over because otherwise it just gets a bit uh, ridiculous. Uh, but we're constantly updating this as we learn more. But it's very rare that we learn a new breakthrough moment that we think should replace one of the old ones, you know. And so we have the blueprint for strength, the 10 biggest really important principles in strength training that, that we apply to all of our programming. Uh, we have the blueprint for flexibility, which is exactly the same. And we have the blueprint for nutrition, which is exactly the same. The 10 commandments to, to getting results or how you should eat, uh, uh, or how you should structure your nutrition. And then we've created one for at-home workouts because there was such a need for it. And, you know, people were just so blown away with the results they were getting with our at-home workouts and asking us why. And, and we're like, it's really not that difficult. You just apply the same principles that you do in all your other programs, but you learn to use leverage and your body weight rather than relying on fancy machines and equipment, you know. And so we thought, well, we'll put the, uh, the, the at-home our workouts blueprint together too for people who are stuck at home and want to learn you know how we build our programs and so yeah they're, they're, they're highly valuable and uh and something that we really really um uh like to give away because it's not it's it's about teaching people how to fish you know mm -hmm. it's not just about um giving them a fish yeah and speaking of uh, teaching how to fish let's let's dive straight in so the first key lesson uh, that was without a doubt the biggest breakthrough for me, and when we did this, you know, the, the evolution of Unity Gym and the UMS, one of the things that makes it so unique and so effective is that Yanni, Richard and me 
before we created the UMS, we all had our own way of training and we all had our own passion. And because each of us went quite narrow-minded with the way that we did, we were all able to see how that produced a better result in one area than what the rest of us were doing. And that's what made the UMS. It's that we created this middle point between all of them. The flexibility journey was my um, journey. That was, a, that was a really big thing for me. And the first breakthrough that I had, without a doubt, was that you should treat your stretching as a workout. And this was a real game changer for all three of us because we never did that before. We, well, it was a game changer for thousands of people. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but for us first, and, and I'll tell you how it came about. I basically, um, I made a decision that I was going to become flexible. And the decision that I made was that I was going to stop making excuses for not stretching and that I was going to make stretching my priority. And that was the only decision. That, that's what the decision was. I was going to stop doing my training and then if I felt like it, I'd do some stretching at the end. I made that decision. So what happened was I was basically doing flexibility training before anything else. And I don't recommend you do this. This is not the best way to do it, but this was the first big breakthrough that I had. So when I would start my workout, I'm doing my flexibility training first. And then when I finished that flexibility training, I'd go into everything else that I wanted to do. Some days I wouldn't do anything else. There was actually, over about a six month period, there were some times where for two or three weeks, all I did was stretching because I, didn't, I, I either didn't have the time or I didn't have the energy. But, I, but my point is that flexibility became a workout for me. It wasn't like, whereas in the past, it was always, if I've got the time, if I've got the energy, if I can be bothered. And of course, that never creates consistency if you approach it with that way. So having that, treating your flexibility as a workout, meaning that it is, you know, you know you've got your workout time, you've got your gym gear, the flexibility training is part of that workout, game changer. It's not something that you do, um, uh, yeah, at the end or if you've got time. And the evolution is really important here because we, we realize very quickly once you start to dig into the literature and the research, like you can't ignore the 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 the, the um, plethora of good research that s suggests that you shouldn't stretch a muscle before you go and strengthen it if you plan to lift heavy. Uh, there is um, there is risk involved in that. One, it sort of compromises the joint integrity, and two, it affects the central nervous system's ability pr to produce force. So. You know, essentially, if you go and stretch your, if you have a big stretching uh, session on the chest, and then you try and do heavy maximal loaded bench press, you're going to be weaker on the bench. And there's an argument to suggest that you, you you're at higher risk of injury now as well because you've loosened up a joint that needs to become really strong and rigid. Uh, and so, uh, we learned very quickly that we couldn't do it like that. We couldn't do it before the workout. Um, and so what we start, what, what we, what we did next was we experimented with splitting the workout and essentially for about a year or maybe half a year, we did double day training. And I don't know if you two remember this, but I certainly do where we came in in the morning, we did our strength because the research suggested that you do your strength first, get that mm -hmm, done. Mm -hmm. And then we'd have a rest for sort of four to six hours. And then we'd do our flexibility in the afternoon. And that did produce good results. It did work. But man, was it hard. Oh, you know, brutal. I remember so many times and it was easier for us because there was like six of us here. That was the three, myself, Rad, Richard. And we also had a couple of other trainers, uh, my partner who was still working here, my ex-partner who was still working here. And uh, we all did it together, you know. And so it was sort of like a team effort. We'd motivate each other and, mm. and we get it done. And for that six to 12 months, we did start to see a good result. But very quickly life started getting in the way and we found that the business really started to suffer because we were allocating so much time to our training every day sort of four hours to our training every day that there was just wasn't much time to get much done you yeah. know yeah. and and we and the business started to really suffer yeah. and 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 then you know we started to think like what's the point of us perfecting a system that no one else is ever going to do yeah. or a very small percentage of people are going to have yeah, the time and yeah. diligence to, to do you know yeah. and that's when we started to go okay we need to we need to get something into a 60 minute workout that's going to produce really good results. Oh, it's shirts off Friday. Man, I'm burning up here. And <laughs> really I, I, thought I, was gonna, I thought I was gonna survive the show. <laughs> I was like, I'm just gonna wait until the end of the show. Hit the I'm like gonna... button if you wanna see Rad's abs I'll some more. I'll this thermal <laughs> shirt off, but I'm dying here, man. Oh, good oh, Lord. Right. Anyone who's listening on the podcast, there's a really good reason why you need to get over and watch live on the YouTube channel. Uh, Rad just stripped down in the in the booth here. Uh, so, 
Uh, you know, we then started to put together a workout that was going to um, really, really emphasize efficiency. Efficiency was key. We had to deliver on the promise of developing developing strength and flexibility uh, in the workout. And this is before we started to prioritize fitness as well. And, uh, and we created a workout that worked in 60 minutes for our members. And then we rolled that out. And over a year, the results were staggering. <clears throat> we had people who came in off the street completely compromised from injury, who within a year were doing like a decent middle splits and a decent front splits and a decent pain. Not like astronomically good, but way above average. Yep. Like uh, good enough. A enough that when average people look at them, they go, they go Jesus, holy that crap, really look how flexible. Yeah. And we were still, us personally, were still doing a bit of a broken all over the place workout that took a lot longer. And I started to go, man, our members are getting better results than I am. Yeah. You know, and, and the secret was that it was efficient. It was so efficient that it was easy to do and that it was rewarding and it wasn't draining to do. And that's when I really went to, back to the drawing board and said, I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to do similar to what we teach in our classes now. You know, uh, we have a little bit more time, so we could do a little bit more volume, but uh, we adopted the efficiency model across. And that's when we combined, really combined the strength and flexibility to, at a one-to-one -one ratio. And then we had a, a series of events occur that made us really highlight the need for more interval training and more fitness training in the workout. And this was a real uh, sort of ball ache to get over. This, cr this threw a real spanner in the works because we thought we had the perfect formula and format that was 50 50 strength and flexibility and when we decided we wanted to bring a 20 minute hit interval circuit in to the workout it it really shone a light on the efficiency the need for efficiency mm -hmm. you know because we still needed to get that 10 minute warm-up like specific warm-up done we needed to get enough stimulus uh, based on all the scientific literature to elicit a strength adaptation or a muscular hypertrophy adaptation <coughs> depending on which phase of the program uh, periodization we're in and we needed the same for flexibility and now we've got to try and get people fit we had f close friends of ours who were super strong having strokes and all sorts of stuff like that and we were just like no we cannot neglect fitness training we need to get these people moving more the uh, the program at that stage was like you know do some cardio outside of the workout we're just going to do strength and flexibility here you know yeah and that's when we Re, we um, again iterated the program and uh, changed the promise for UMS to develop strength, flexibility and fitness in every workout evenly. And that's when the magic really happened. It was mm -hmm. phenomenal. Yep. I want to go just off topic here real quick because Jen's Fitness has said something that uh, is off topic but really relevant for us. Um, Jen's is saying, is there any strategy to increase the number of subscribers I can genuinely say that your channel is one of the most underrated fitness channels. It should at least have two million followers easy. We absolutely love you for that, gents. And I can tell you right now, the amount of effort from us that goes into growing this channel, and there are many facets to what I'm about to say, which was a really watered down version of it. But our strategy is basically to give away better stuff for free than what other people charge for. And that's why we put out so much great content where we're just giving stuff away and just trying to get you guys a result. But the real secret source comes from you guys sharing it. If you can, anything that you see on our YouTube channel, just click that share button and whatever or podcast or podcast and whatever, wherever you spend most of your time, wherever you've got the greatest following or the greatest circle of friends, be it Facebook, be it Twitter, be it Reddit, be it whatever, Tumblr, <laughs> you just, uh, we want you to just share it and put it there. And oh my God, you, you have no idea. How, how much that does for us and for the he, growth of this He's followed up by saying a strategy yeah, other, other than, than shirtless, shirtless Rad. Yeah, yeah. Man, I keep trying to get mm. Rad and Richie the rig in front of the camera shirtless. <laughs> uh, they're, they're, getting, they're getting a little bit... Um, they're getting a little bit tight with uh, uh, how much they want to show off these yeah, days because they save it for their only fans. Well, we do, we do our <laughs> workouts in the UMS uh, online coaching program with our shirts off, so you can see it there. Oh, um, oh, Marlon, if that's well, not a reason to subscribe, yeah. nothing, nothing is. <laughs> While we're off topic, Marlon Araya has said, I just bought the 18-minute stretching routine and you recommended to do it one to two times a day. If I do it three times a day, six days a week, will I get better results? Look, you would... If you, as long as you understand that if you did that, like stretching more throughout, I, I, I'll rephrase that, doing mobility more throughout the day, moving your joints through full range of motion more will achieve a greater result. But as long as you understand what the difference between flexibility and mobility is, and you're not 
doing like hardcore pushing yourself stuff, which the 18 minute stretching routine really isn't. It's a, it is a more gentle routine. That said, if you have the time to do that three times a day, you could spend your time much better to get more flexible than just doing the same thing three times a day. You would get a much better result, for example, doing the 18 minute stretching routine once a day and doing the flexibility masterclass once a day. Like, infinitely like a, a mind-bogglingly better and, result and we're going to talk about why john zena has has uh, hit the nail on the head their weighted stretch is the way to go uh, that is actually point four from today that we're going to so we're, we're going to get, get into it so, let, so so let's get to let's point keep, two now let's so, keep moving so uh, the next the next point is why you should increase joint movement and then strengthen it this was another massive breakthrough for us and, and what it basically means is this is why we settled on this mobility on this warm up that we now do, which is a mobility routine. And the difference between mobility and flexibility training is that mobility is really an umbrella term for anything that takes your joints through full range of motion. So if you do deep squatting, that's mobility. If you do Cossack squats, that's mobility training. Um, if you do, if you just circle your shoulder, as long as it goes through full range of motion, that's mobility training. Flexibility training, on the other hand, it, it, think of it more like weightlifting. There's a lot of different types of weightlifting you can do to become stronger and more flexible, but it all involves doing sets and reps and doing something that requires recovery, generally speaking. That's what flexibility training is like. It's a much higher intensity. So mobility training is generally a much lower intensity, usually done as a warm up or a cool down, whereas flexibility training is the stuff that increases your mobility. That confuses yep. a lot of people, but it uh, it is the well, truth. A lot, so, of, a lot of people get it really wrong. Yep. A lot of people stretch as a as a warm up, and yeah. it's funny, you know. I did kickboxing for four years, uh, you know, every day of the week, um, and that was exactly what we used to do. We used to do a bit of a warm up, get the cardio going, and then we'd do a stretch session for about five minutes. And our stretch session was literally one person partner up, one person standing against the wall, the other person lifts your leg up and tries to push it over your head. <laughs> that was our stretch session. And then, uh, and then we got into the workout. And that is like the worst possible thing you can do. Uh, now we know that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, forcing stretches, and we're gonna get to that later on in this series. But uh, the, the idea of stretching a muscle out in a static or isometric stretch before you need to use ballistic strength yeah. or, or applied um, force is just the total wrong thing to do. Yeah, it is. You know? but, but, but that's not what this points yeah. about. The, yeah. idea of, the idea of this is that one of the best ways to, one of the ways to get flexible and, and one piece of the pie is increase a joint's range of motion and then strengthen it. So a really good way to think of that is when you do a lower body um, mobility routine, like yeah, there's great videos on our YouTube channel. There's, there's a, a recent one of Yanni doing this really good hip mobility routine that he does before his squat sessions and then doing heavy squatting. And I don't mean heavy squatting like 2RM or 1RM or whatever, but just loaded squatting, you know? You could be doing 50% max effort and just doing five to eight reps and you're barely going above 50 or 60% max effort, but it's still, you're still strengthening the range of motion that you just um, created. Same thing can be applied to the shoulders, you know? If you do really good shoulder mobility, and then you do um, bench pressing where you're accessing full range of motion, it doesn't mean creating nice mobility, full range of motion, and then doing half squats, or doing like a wide grip bench where you're not accessing full range of motion. We're talking about creating or accessing your full range of motion through a good mobility warm-up and then strengthening the same range of motion, not strengthening a limited range of motion. Yeah. Um, that's not to say that that's not a good way to train, but not for flexibility, not to build flexibility. That's not what we're talking about. Yeah, but there's also a couple of really important things here, like, and we're gonna talk about this a fair bit um, today and also uh, I think next week. Uh, there is, um, it's really important to understand that the adaptation of flexibility training is occurring in the central nervous system. And one of the <coughs> fastest ways to develop flexibility is to also develop strength in conjunction with your flexibility training. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a, we, we have two sayings at Unity Gym that we live by. True strength cannot be achieved in the absence of mobility. If you don't have the mobility and you're forcing the movement, then the body tends to fight itself and you're wasting um, muscle motor units, you're wasting muscle activation, you're wasting neural attention on uh, your body trying to overcome the, the mobility deficiency. 
But on the flip side, true flexibility cannot be achieved in the absence of strength because the adaptation of flexibility in and of itself is your brain adapting and delaying its um, uh, uh, inhibitor, which is uh, basically the system of safety. If you're not strong and stable in a movement, then your brain is going to inhibit that movement to prevent injury. And that's a good thing. It shouldn't be, you, sh you shouldn't be frustrated with that because your brain's thinking, well, we've never been down there before and we're trying to get down there right now at speed, uncontrolled, without really ever having developed the neurons down there, developed the muscle tissue at that length, all that sort of thing. <coughs> Uh, we're at very high risk of tearing something or, or hurting something. And so what flexibility adaptation is, is, is um, getting into those positions over and over again in conjunction with developing strength down there. And, uh, and then, uh, and only then does the brain go, okay, I feel safe here. I'm gonna uh, enable this range of movement. And so the idea of, um, uh, that we're talking about here in point two, why you should increase joint movement, then strengthen it, because only once it's been strengthened will you actually be able to access the range of movement. And, uh, and that's one of the big problems we have with, with uh, stretching practices that don't emphasize the development of strength at the same time. It's not functional flexibility. You know, you can't apply that uh, flexibility or rely on that flexibility when you are um, uh, performing in the real world, you know, when, you, when your body demands it. And, and a good example of that is someone falling over, you know. If you fall over or you, you roll your ankle, like we have guys here who come in and they train for a year and they love running and they come in and go, man, I rolled my ankle so bad the other day uh, and I, I just kept going. I didn't even hurt myself. Normally, a year ago before coming to Unity, I would have, I would have been in a bloody boot, a moon boot for a month with torn ligaments in the foot, you know? And it's because we train the body to go through that r a range of movement and then develop strength there. So you're, you're able to actually use the range. Mm -hmm. yep. Shall we move on to point three? Yeah, absolutely. So the next point is why you must mobilize and strengthen opposing muscles. And this was another huge one. This idea that if you really want to create usable flexibility, like I was, I got to this point where you know, I could get down into the splits, but I couldn't actually do any of these movements that I was watching, that I, sorry, not watching, that I wanted to learn in calisthenics and uh, martial arts and, you know, just the movement practice that required that level of flexibility because my muscles, the opposing muscles, so for example, middle splits, the adductors are the muscles that need to be flexible. The opposing muscles, the glutes, uh, and even the quads a little bit, um, they need to be strong to be able to pull yourself into that full range of motion. And what happens is it's not just about being able to access it and use it by uh, having strength to pull yourself into that range without an external force. It also has a hack on the central nervous system where um, when the muscles become strong, the opposing muscles to the muscles you're trying to create flexibility in it, it, it has a win-win and it, and it teaches the nervous system that this is even more accessible uh, and it, it really adds to your flexibility. Yeah, a good example of this, I'll, I'll give you three good examples. The first one, and, and, and the one that comes to mind every time is, is Jean-Claude Van Damme. You know, um, I've seen, and I can kick high, and I can see, I've seen many people kick high in, uh, I, I'm a huge fan of UFC, and from time to time uh, in UFC, I see someone kick high who doesn't have true flexibility and 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 they literally their feet just go up from under them and they f end up on their ass they fall over and how many times have you seen someone drunk at a party try and demonstrate some karate or taekwondo or something that they think they're good at and they end up on their ass because oh, they man. kick too high i've seen that heaps of times you know uh, yeah. maybe rad and i because we've done a lot of martial arts have people trying to show off to us but but um uh, a, a really good example of this is, is Jean-Claude Van Damme. You know, he's got that classic high kick where he, he in, very famously would kick up but then be able to hold his foot up above your head or in your face, you know, and you can read the sole of his shoe. Um, another good, great example is a ballet dancer. You know, a ballet dancer has true flexibility because they don't need inertia to get the foot up there. They can, they can control bring the foot up and uh, and do amazing things with the body. That's true flexibility. And it really, really does create joint integrity, joint stability, and it complements um, everything. And that's, you know, there's, there's, there's a couple of really great strategies that we use in the uh, UMS program in, a, in our training 
where we combine this within the workout and it actually uh, it, it starts to really hack into the way the nervous system works because you can actually sort of delay the brain's inhibitor um, uh, system uh, within the workout by fatiguing the central nervous system and um, a lot of magic starts to happen where you really unlock flexibility at a much higher rate than than when you don't know these systems and processes so uh, you know mobilizing and strengthening opposing muscles is absolutely critical yeah absolutely critical yeah and, and, and another really big breakthrough for us when we learn how to do that with inner workout prescribed yep yep and there's a lot of uh <laughs> There's a lot of things you got to learn to be able to actually apply this stuff. It's, um, yeah, it, it's, uh, but it's really good. It's a fun journey. And um, the, the third, I just realized I, I, was, I promised three examples in that. Uh, the third example is a press, a straddle press handstand. In a straddle press handstand, uh, one of the most difficult things is you need to go into the straddle to get yourself lower down to be able to do the press handstand. It's much harder than a pike press handstand in calisthenics or gymnastics. Uh, but you need that strength. Like, so you need the flexibility in the adductors and hamstrings, but then you need the strength in the hip flexors and quads and core muscles, the opposing muscles. And it's really funny because when you haven't developed that, that, um, that skill, that strength skill, it's just an impossible movement. When you put your hands on the floor and try and do it, the body just goes, what are you trying to do here? But mm -hmm. once you've um, developed what we refer to as compression strength uh, in, in calisthenics or gymnastic strength or in the unified movement system, uh, it, the movement just unfolds. It's, it's really quite beautiful. It, act, it is. I remember um, trying so hard to do a press to handstand and it just, it was just so impossible. There, I, I couldn't even work out in my mind how you could ever do it. But once we worked on that compression strength, and it it is a journey, man. It's not it's <laughs> not something that ha we're not talking about. Oh, you just try this, and a month later you'll be doing it. It took us a while, um, but all of a sudden, what was impossible was possible. It well, just you, you, I think a great way to prove how impossible it feels is to get people when we do compression strength for the first time with people, and we get them into a, a seated straddle. Uh, like an upright pancake and then try to get them to do leg lifts and contract the hip flexors and the quads and you watch how quickly the body goes into cramp mm -hmm. and just completely cramps up because it's just so foreign and uh, most uh, gymnastic strength, calisthenic strength requires the ability to do this stuff and, and, and it's just it's just like anything. It's like it's, it's learning a new skill, you know, it's really, really cool, really important. Mm -hmm. So yeah. this brings us a good segue into point four, which is... Um, one of, I think, uh, I, I reckon if you, uh, other than treating flexibility as a workout, I think the introduction of loaded stretching would have to be the second biggest, like revolutionary um, yep. Uh, yep, sure. change that, that, that we made that yep. sort of, it, it, it goes against, it's, re it's really challenging the status quo. You know, so many, so many flexibility training philosophies or stretching philosophies is, you know, this relax, uh, find the stretch, static, breathe, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, and that's what most people think. Most people think flexibility training is just general passive stretching, but it's not. And, and, I, and I can tell you that we have explored and uh, researched so many different stretching methods, so many different flexibility training methods, because you've got to remember, we didn't become flexible as kids, like most people do. We became flexible as adults and becoming flexible as adults, it's, it's the age old saying, it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks. Your body is really, really generally <laughs> quite set in its way uh, by the time you get to 35, 40 years old. And you've got to break down really strong inhibitors in the brain that have that have built and formulated over your whole lifetime to protect you from harm and you're you're trying to convince it the brain to just override all that and let it all go and allow yourself to open up and start moving unlock that flexibility yep and uh and this was just a game changer yep yep absolutely it um it, it was something that i'd never done before i i tried stretching you know, for a long time, I was doing a lot. Um, well, not a lot, but I, I, well, yeah, a lot compared to the average person. A lot of flexibility and stretching when I was doing my over over a decade of kung fu training, but never anything loaded. And um, and it's funny now that I actually reflect back on it, I can see. Um, you know, my teacher used to tell me how by doing the the kung fu forms was one of the best ways to get flexible, but he didn't say why and he couldn't explain it he, he wasn't he hadn't learned this stuff i guess um but 
reflecting back on it, now I understand why. Because when you look at the test of water, that is a form of loaded stretching because your muscles are loaded, you've got weight in it, and you're, um, you know, you're controlling your own body weight in end ranges. So I can see how my biggest, you know, my first breakthrough with flexibility was by doing martial arts, and that's what it was. I was doing loaded stretching. So when we actually started getting um, serious about it and doing things like Jefferson curls and, you know, uh, active pang, um, yeah, loaded pancakes and active middle splits and stuff. Uh, yeah, it was massive, just huge breakthrough and and uh, and something that's helped uh, a lot of people. And you know, one of the um, you know what what the point here is why why we love loaded stretching, eccentrics and isometrics. There's um there's something to understand here, and 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 you know what I've read among many of the many of the things I've read about the topic is that when you do uh, eccentric, uh, especially eccentric loaded stretching. So what that means is that means when you're an eccentric contraction is when the muscle fibers lengthen during the contraction so if you think about it, it basically the the downward phase of any weightlifting movement where the weight is going down with gravity like when you come down on a pull up or when you lower a barbell down to your chest on a bench press or when you go down on a squat that's an eccentric contraction when you do eccentric um stretching you actually lengthen and thicken the muscle fibers, which means that whilst they, uh, whilst they become, you become more flexible, you're also thickening and creating hypertrophy in the muscle fibers, which is far superior to only lengthening the muscle fibers through static stretching, where it, that'll still, over time, produce flexibility. It'll still delay the brain's inhibitors uh, and allow you to access more flexibility. But when you're not thickening the muscle fibers as you do that, you you become more susceptible to injury yeah, you be, as you you're become more, more flexible. frail. You know, and so you know, who wants that? Because it's not functional, right? Yeah. So it's a really, really big breakthrough, really big point, and uh, yeah, it's our fourth fourth uh, breakthrough. And if you if you're listening to this and you you're not aware, this is all on our YouTube channel as well. So you can get this in our flexibility blueprint if you download. You can get all ten key lessons, and there's also a playlist on our YouTube channel called. 10 key lessons to get flexible fast. You can watch a video on each of these points, so make sure you go and check them out. Which brings us into our um, our uh, last point, um, today. which is, what's the scientific mechanism of flexibility training? And this was, this was another real, I mean, look, all of these were big breakthroughs, but this was another really big breakthrough because the scientific mechanism of flexibility, I always thought that flexibility was about making your muscles more elastic. And I've heard so many people say that. You know, you're making your muscles more flexy. And I used to think it was literally elongating the muscles. Yeah, permanently. yeah. Like as they, eventually, they'd just be like a big floppy piece yeah. of... I remember people <laughs> giving me this analogy saying that it's like a rubber band and when you put a rubber band in a, in a freezer, in the freezer, oh, and it gets ten, cold. Ten burpees, thanks. Oh, whoops. Um, <laughs> the, uh, you know, that it gets cold and it doesn't stretch as much and then when it's warmed up and it's relaxed, it stretches further. And none of them are true. What's actually happening when you um, go to full range of motion is your muscles are already very elastic. They're, they're designed that way. And, um, you know, it's this sliding filament theory where you've got muscle fibers on muscle fibers and they all slide within in each other to create um, uh, a muscle body. And so what's happening is you try and pull your legs out into the splits, you only get halfway, you only get to 90 degrees or whatever, and you can't go any further. What's actually happening there is the, the brain and the central nervous system, it detects a range of motion that it perceives as a threat, sends a signal back down and through proprioception that says, let's tighten up these muscles and stop causing it, you know, prevent an injury happening. Through the process of flexibility training, when it's done properly, you actually delay those inhibitors. So that's all that's happening. So if at first, uh, for those of you listening to the podcast, I'm moving my hands to a 90 degree angle. If your legs pull apart to 90 degrees and the inhibitors kick in here and stop you going further, do effective flexibility training and all of a sudden your brain will allow you to go to 100 degrees before the inhibitors kick in. And then before you know it, you'll be going to 120 degrees and hopefully if you're lucky and you've got the right hips, eventually you'll get to 180 degrees or maybe more realistically 170 or 160. But that's the process of flexibility training. And this is the real kicker here. You can really stifle that process of delaying the inhibitors by 
going too hard. And we're going to talk about that more next week. Yeah, that's right. That, but, is, <laughs> that is one of the points we'll but, be talking about next but week. But what I want to do is I want to get every get, get everyone to get up out of their chair after this podcast and, pr and, and, and try what I'm about to say to validate our point. You know, most people, if they stand up next to a chair or a table or a couch, can put one leg out to 90 degrees. So what, they're standing up straight, the leg lifts out, you feel a nice little stretch in the groin or adductors. You've got to be super duper tight not to achieve 90 degrees in one side. And then drop that leg down and then repeat the, the process on the other side. And most people will be able to get both of their legs up to 90 degrees. Now, when you think about lo logically, there is not one muscle body or tendon that connects both leg to each other. They only connect to the pelvis in the middle, which c remains um, in the same position, whether you do the right leg or the left leg. So why is it that the body can't do both legs at the same time? for exactly the same reason that Rad just explained, because the body, the brain perceives that as a threat. You are not uh, ready for that, and it might uh, result in an injury. And so it prevents both legs traveling out at the same time. But that is just a nice, really quick, easy way that anyone can try to, to, to demonstrate what we're saying here. That flexibility, you can already get the leg to 90 on each side. That's what's required for the, for the middle splits, which is one of the hardest flexibility achievements to unlock. Uh, but the brain is restricting you from doing so uh, because uh, it is, um, it is, you're not strong and stable there. You know? And the fastest way to get strong and stable there is to put the five principles that we've just talked about into practice. And, uh, and, and, and just be consistent, you know, be absolutely consistent. The last thing that I will finish on, which is not, uh, which we haven't discussed, which sort of came up with someone asking whether they could do the 18 minute stretch routine three times a day. It's extremely important that you guys remember that just in the same way that we're saying you must, to get flexible, you must treat flexibility as a workout, just like you do your uh, cardio fitness training, or just like you do your strength training, uh, weightlifting. But in the same way, it is load to the body. It is perceived as load to the muscle tissues, the connective tissues, the, um, uh, the tendons, ligaments, bones, and, and all of that. And you must manage load. You, you cannot stretch all the time. You cannot um, stretch multiple times a day and think that at some point you're not going to need to recover. Uh, because it is just like doing weightlifting. If you do weightlifting three times a day, and you certainly can do this for a, pr a prescribed period of time, we call it prescribed overreaching, where you are literally trying to overtrain your body. But at the end, you have to have a prescribed recovery period that's sufficient to allow your body to fully adapt and repair itself so that when you come back, you're not overtraining. And, uh, and that's no different whether you're strength training, whether you're going for runs, whether you're training for a marathon and doing a lot of cardio, or whether you're lifting, uh, uh, sorry, stretching and, uh, and training for flexibility. Mm -hmm. yep. Big shout out to uh, our good friend Grant Feldman on the uh, live stream. G-Man. What up, G-Man? Getting, <laughs> getting online for some, uh, for some commenting. I no um, idea what he's saying there. Autofell, gimme. Uh, yeah, you, you have to look at my Facebook page to... Um, to oh, see that. Oh, really? um, so <laughs> thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, we, uh, we hope you got something out of this. We're about to jump over and go live on our UMS online coaching group for the weekly uh, coaching call. That's where we coach our online tribe members in all things uh, exercise, strength, flexibility, and fitness. Uh, so we provide specific coaching for them. And RT, just quickly, RT has said, I've peaked in phase three of the hip and back rehab. The at-home workouts are too much due to my bad hip arthritis. What can you recommend to increase hip, hamstring, and lower core strengthening, especially hips? Without a doubt, the UMS program, brother, that is what it is designed for. It will make you stronger, more flexible, and more capable than you've ever been before. Um, and uh, yeah, man, the, uh, the highly recommend that you give that a try. The reality is that we, we have a lot of off-the-shelf programs, templated programs that work, that produce amazing results, but where the secret sauce in, in um, your training is going to come is being able to discuss your specific uh, body's needs in a coaching format and that's what we do with this weekly it's, group coaching and the that. private it's, group it's, it's the way that we put it together into these one hour workouts that have everything that you need like yanni talked about before and the hip and back rehab programs that you've got are excellent but make no mistake when we made them we made them because we said 
look, people aren't ready to jump into this UMS online coaching yet. They don't trust us. And that's the nature of online programs. You know, people people don't know if, if we're really legit. So we thought, how can we make something that would solve someone's specific problem and give them a little bit more trust with us? And that's where all these other programs came from. But they are all a fragment of what the UMS yeah. itself He's is. He's saying here, I thought UMS may be stepping up too much for me. Do I have it wrong? You absolutely, absolutely have yeah. it wrong. You have it the wrong, UMS brother. is designed to take someone who's got a completely compromised body and an absolute beginner uh, and still cater for an elite level athlete. And that's why we have our coaching calls so we can adapt we teach the you. workouts. We teach you. We teach you, teach you. It, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not the exercise that causes the injury, it's the load management. Yeah. So the exact same exercise can be done by somebody who is very capable and even an elite athlete and the exact same exercise can be done by someone like yourself with hip arthritis as long as the load is managed properly so the range of motion the combination of range of motion slight tweaking of the exercise selection and the amount of weight you lift and the amount of sets and reps you do and the frequency in a week they, yep. they all come uh into the concept of load management and that's what how, what we do in our online coaching group we help people to understand how to apply the right load for themselves so check it out um <laughs> all right team thanks beginning. so much we've we got to jump off now so that we can have a minute break before we go to our online coaching call but thanks so much for for tuning in everybody and yep. if you've made it this far please 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 hit that share button hit the share button share it to your favorite social channel help us spread the love and uh we'll see you next week for another week of uh, at-home workouts and our podcast at the end also, of the week. Also, subscribe if you're on the podcast, like and uh, share as well. Uh, we love you long time and uh, yeah, we love seeing that podcast growing. We got a lot planned for you. We're going to start getting special guests coming on and all sorts of cool stuff. So we'll see you soon. Health is about performance, not just body image. You better be willing to accept what you're going to have to do to get there. We'll start focusing on movement goals, strength goals, flexibility goals. When you nail that skill, it's there forever. The body image goal doesn't get you that far. It's the consistency and frequency that's going to get you there. It's not the intensity. There's no shortcut to mastery in movement. Destination doesn't change overnight, but your direction will. It's the gym is not the place to beat up the body that you hate. It's the place to build the body that you love. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image.